Hi, I'm Eliana Pena, heart failure transplant cardiologist and now quality chief at Thomas Jefferson in Philadelphia. And this is my blog from the American Heart Association in the beautiful town of Chicago. So I've been watching for years my heart failure patients come in with low hemoglobins. And I always turn to my heart health staff and say, why is this patient anemic? And they'll say, oh, that's anemia of chronic disease, but never go beyond that. And now we know that it does matter. And iron deficiency is a problem and it is highly prevalent. And in the United States, it's highly prevalent, particularly in women and African-American women whose iron stores have been depleted, never get replenished. Uh, and so we have conversations about giving IV iron, recognizing that oral iron does not get absorbed. So I am thrilled to have with me here, Dr. Kaurav, and I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself. So I'm Paul Kaurav from the United Kingdom. I work as a clinical cardiologist, heart failure specialist at Portsmouth Hospital's University NHS Trust in Portsmouth on the South Coast. Um, I also have an honorary contract at the University of Glasgow, and that's where actually we, we've had this research based and overseen it from the University of Glasgow. We have a lot of friends in the UK uh, that share a lot of our experiences here in the US and we, we talk about them across the pond and we'll mention a little bit about that. So you've got Iron Man. Absolutely. Tell us about Iron Man. Well, building on what you, the beautiful scene that you've sat there about the problem of iron deficiency, we've, we've got uh, studies that have shown that it's uh, associated with impaired quality of life, impaired exercise capacity, a greater risk of hospitalization for heart failure and death. And that's independent of hemoglobin and anemia. Yeah. And it's, I think, very important to, for, for, for people to appreciate. Um, we've had some data from studies relatively short term with intravenous ferric carboxymaltose showing that out to 24 weeks, intravenous iron correcting the deficiency can help people feel better, very important and have a better exercise capacity. But what we've been missing is longer term data looking at heart failure. Ironman uh, is a trial that's used a different intravenous iron called uh, ferric derisomaltose. It's given What's a... different about that one from the ferric car carboxymaltose? So both can be given at, at, at high dose and some of the uh, other ions that have been uh, uh, available, but ferric derisomaltose we can um, give up to two grams. It depends upon patient's body That's weight. That's a hefty dose. It is, absolutely. So it depends on their body weight and their hemoglobin. Um, and that what it means is for, for many patients, we can give the correct iron deficiency in a single infusion. Patients hate having to come back two or three times. A I agree. Absolutely. So we conducted a, a, a trial with a prime endpoint of uh, recurrent heart failure hospitalizations and cardiovascular death. This has been funded by the British Heart Foundation, a, a charity in the Good UK. Good for them. Absolutely. We're really doing so this. Very, very grateful. It was a probe design, so uh, open label, uh, blinded endpoint adjudication. The feedback we had had from research teams and patients was that conducting it double blind or masked over a prolonged period was going to be very difficult. You. You need a blinded and an unblinded team for every patient visit. Very costly, too. Very costly, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and patients were seen at four weeks, uh, four months, and four monthly thereafter. Did they need to be hospitalized to get into the trial? There was uh, different to firm at AHF. We could recruit a broad range of patients who either hospitalized, a recent hospitalization within the last six months. So or, six months, okay. or, or if they hadn't had a hospitalization, then an elevated NT pro BMP what was or, your cut or BLP. Off? So in sinus rhythm for NT pro BMP was 250. Uh, in a AF, it was uh, 1,000. It was one-to-one -one randomization, okay. um, intravenous ferric derisomaltose mm -hmm. versus usual care. And um, it was an event-driven trial. And we, we had challenges uh, due to COVID. Um, Everybody uh, has had the COVID challenges. Uh, absolutely. And, but um, I, think, I think from an intravenous iron perspective, different to a tablet where you could get around it perhaps by posting exactly. it. We needed patients to come up. They had to come in. And yeah. so there's no doubt that as a trial went through COVID, there's been underdosing in the intravenous iron arm. So we had, as most trials have done in COVID, had a pre-specified sensitivity analysis as well. Um, the iron criteria to come in very similar to the previous studies 
transference saturations of less than 20%, okay. ferritin less than 100. We we're, were designing the study as far back as 2014, 2015. Mm. So uh, it, 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 some, some further data come through, but we had an, we, patients could be randomized up to a ferritin of, of 400 if TSAT was okay. less than yeah. 20%. Do you have the hemoglobin cutoff? Exclusion criteria of less than nine grams per deciliter. Okay. We didn't feel as though people would be comfortable not doing anything below that. You'd be surprised how many people would be comfortable <laughs> not doing anything. Yeah. Um, and we had a higher cut of, of, of 13 for um, women, 14 for men, not because you don't get iron deficiency above that. It's just less prevalent, and we didn't want lots of screen failures. And it may be harder failures. to randomize them uh, at that point. Ejection fraction less than or equal to 45%. Again, that so was... So a little bit of HEF-REF and a little bit of MREF. Are you going to look at the separate groups? We, we have. We've done some uh, initial... Uh, an analysis of subgroups looking at turtiles of, mm -hmm. of ejection mm -hmm. fraction. That'd be interesting to see that. So what, what were your results? So the results for the overall uh, trial, we found that um, the rate ratio was uh, 0 0.82, so an 18% relative risk reduction. Of P the combined endpoint. Of the combined endpoint, okay. yes, with a p-value of uh, 0 0.07. So Almost squeezed by. When we look at the COVID data, which we think that the, the, the trial was, was markedly sure. influenced, then the, the rate ratio is, is, is stronger. It's 0 0.76, so 24% relative yeah, risk reduction. That's much more significant. And, and p-value 0.047. There were numerically fewer heart failure hospitalizations and cardiovascular deaths, but neither of those, when you look at those individual endpoints, reach statistical significance. So how many patients got all the, do or the whole thing, or how many patients got only one visit? How did you divide yeah, that Yeah, so we, we still got some data analysis to do. What, what This was an intention to treat yep. study, so yep. very important, uh, and, and slightly different to a firm AHF. Um, we, 98% of people in the intravenous iron arm received at least one dose, and almost, it was just below 80%, over the trial duration, median follow-up 2.7 years, had one or two mm. doses. What we're uncertain on is how many people have missed redosing. And the reason for that is to know that we needed them to have attended to have a blood test. And so we, we haven't got, got those. When would redosing have happened? At four weeks, four months, and four months thereafter, we rechecked their um, iron indices. If the ferritin was less than 100, or the TSAT was less than 25%, we redosed. And we, we, we chose a higher cut for the TSAT than entry, given that our, our goal here was to try and maintain iron sure, repletion. Sure, sure. And it, to me, it's counterintuitive. It's something that's bad for you to wait for that to, to reoccur for a substantial exactly, period of time. Exactly. Wow. This must have been a very tough trial to do during COVID. Absolutely. And it was at a time, so in the UK, we had national lockdowns where oh, pa yeah. patients yeah. weren't permitted to come up out. Research staff, we had, we had a superb vaccination uh, development program and all of the research staff. And this is pull, all going on were, at the same time. Onto that. When we started the trial, we were anticipating that um, patients, uh, over a longer duration, patients' uh, status might change. And and that some patients might not be able to attend hospital. So actually, we asked patients to consent to record linkage for hospitalizations. So and you could at least check and see what, what was... had happened. So 97% That was there. really smart to do that. What would you tell our clinical audience that listens to this? What would you tell them? So I think the important thing here is how this builds on, on other data. This, this isn't a standalone trial. It's building on the, the, the data of demonstrating well-being certainly that needed double blind trials to demonstrate that, I, I, I do believe that. And then a firm AHF, which was a study published uh, two years ago, presented so the AHA two, 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 two years ago, looked at a specific group of people hospitalized, pre-discharged with, with ferric carboxymaltose, treated out to 24 weeks mm -hmm. if required, followed for a mm -hmm. year, and showed very similar magnitudes of benefit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with and without the COVID sensitivity analysis. And I, I think, the, the, the totality of data now, I, I think I, I'm very comfortable speaking to patients to, to say that I'm deficiency correcting it. There's a, a good chance it can make You'll you feel, feel better. better. You'll feel better. And actually, we've got increasing data demonstrating that it can reduce heart failure hospitalizations. And for patients, they hate That's heart failure hospitalizations. They hate to be in the hospital. And, That's and for, for healthcare sure. Healthcare providers, 
it's an expensive service. Yeah, and for the system, it's an expensive. Now, the U.S. has been doing their own trials, people at Duke. Absolutely. How do you see that combining? The Duke team um, are doing a, a really important study called HeartFID, um, hoping to present that next year. It will be the, the numerically the largest number of, of, of patients. HeartFED will reduce ejection fraction yeah. again. Still got missing data for the HEFPAF group. Hef, yeah. Hopefully we'll cement this um, even even further in clinical practice. But you know, perhaps pooling the data, looking at cardiovascular death, we, 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 we may well get it. If you well could pull it, it, but maybe even a, um, some kind of meta-analysis. I'm, I'm not a big fan of meta-analysis, but it will give you an idea where the uh, points sit. I, I, absolutely. And there have been some questions raised after a firm about whether it, ischemic patients with ischemic etiology mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. have the most to gain. It makes logical sense, but... And we still need to get after it and, and prove it. We, we do. So so I think that, that you know, my final message is we've got to look for it to start with. If we don't look for it, if we ain't going to do yeah, anything. Yep. If you don't get those lab tests, you'll never find it. And and, and these are simple lab tests. They're available yeah, to, to, to all everyone. All the labs have them. Ab- yeah. Absolutely. And then, uh, yeah, I think patients will find this an attractive as a different option to another yeah, tablet. Yeah, and, and it says to them, I can make you feel better if we can do this. Well, I want to congratulate you because that was a lot of work. Uh, And it's just amazing how clinical trials, we just keep pushing along. So next time you do another analysis, come back and and talk to us again. But thank you for being here. I want to thank my audience. I hope you're taking some really good clinical points here that if you don't measure it, you won't see it. Uh, So think about it when you have that patient in front of you. And I know I keep telling you all these other things you have to think about. But this is a definite one where the work continues to accumulate, but they're all pointing in the right direction. Ileana Pinyam signing off from the American Heart.